We're back on the magic of the musicals. It's Alex Belfield in a very cold and wintry New York, and we've come to 44th Street and Broadway to the Majestic Theatre to talk to the big star of Phantom of the Opera. And quite frankly, there's only one, and that's the Phantom, and that's Howard McGillan. How are you? I'm great, Alex. Good to see you. It's good to see you. And what a life you've got. You're the star of probably the biggest show in the world. It's one of the oldest and one of the most well-known, and you're it. That must be nice. It is. It's amazing. I mean, I, I, you know, I think in some ways it's hard not to take it for granted. I've done it now for... Um, um, over seven years running. I mean, uh, spanning nine years actually, because I took a couple years off. But uh, it's 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 phenomenal. It's incredible. What are you like as a person? Because I've interviewed so many phantoms over the year, whether it's in the West End, whether it's in Vegas or here, and some are very dark, and then others take it as a joke and as something that you should mock and just enjoy. Are you the kind of person that shuts the curtains all day and just stays dark? <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, when I first when, when I first took over here at the Majestic, uh, I was warned. Oh, wait, you know, just it, it's only a matter of time, and you're going to be. You know, because everyone who's played the Phantom here has changed, you know, and they've become very dark. And I said, look, you know, I mean, one of the advantages of coming to this uh, role at this point in my career, I've been doing this now, I've been working on Broadway for the last 25 years. So I, I, I had a perspective on it to begin with. It wasn't, it wasn't do or die, life or death. I, 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 you know, it wasn't going to be the end all and be all of my life. So I was so happy to have the opportunity to play it and have enjoyed so much the, you know, the, the rewards of doing it this long. But uh, uh, I, I am perfectly able to leave it <laughs> at the stage door when, when the day is done. Good. You're not going to kind of kidnap me or anything. That's good. No, no, no. That won't be happening. And let's talk about your career because you've had such a wonderful career. You've worked both here and the other side of the Atlantic and you've worked in all the biggest shows. Your highlights, what have you enjoyed the most? Well, I, I would have to say probably the, the highlight in my career was... Uh, if not now, because you know, there's you cannot take away from uh, me this wonderful experience of of doing Phantom of the Opera for this long. But that aside, I would have to say Anything Goes was one of the high points of my career. Uh, it was just so much fun to do that show. Um, we had a lovely run here. Um, I think I was in it on uh, um, in New York for. 20 months or so and then was lucky enough to be asked to go over and open the show in London with Elaine Page Bernard Cribbins we had a blast and how does it feel for you going from here Broadway to the West End because I know our guys dream of coming here I have to say that it was always a dream of mine to work in the in the West End and and was happy to do it not just with anything goes it's always always a thrill to work in London and to be asked, because there's so many people for them to choose from, and to get equity to allow you to go over, you've got to be something special, haven't you? Yeah, and there was a lot of talk about how, you know, it, well, it, I don't know if it's going to be possible. And I was, I was finally, uh, I, I somehow slipped through and uh, was so happy to be, to be there. You're known for your stage presence, and you really need to have it with Phantom. You can't half sell this, can you? You can't, no. I mean, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, you can't walk through this. And um, not that I think I ever would, but, but you, it keeps you on your toes. You certainly, you have to come in and you have to go at this 100%. You cannot walk through it. Um, it it's just, it's such an intense character. And by the end of the show, I'm, I'm wrung out. I really am just dripping sweat. I mean, it's, you know, it, first of all, the makeup process alone seals your entire hairline in in this bald cap that you put on first before all of the other layers of makeup are put on several layers of latex and wigs and hats and everything. Um, so, you know, you're, you're really dripping wet by the end of the evening, which is a wonderful and perhaps a little bit disgusting at the same time uh, feeling. But uh, it's, it's a great, great uh, ride to do this show. And then I turn up on a two-show day. This must be your living nightmare. Uh, no, not at all. I, I, yeah, I do. I grab a little cat nap. I had, I had a little cat nap before you came over, just, uh, just so I could recharge. Because it's, 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 it's a bit of a marathon. And is the rule on a two-show day that you don't leave the theatre in between because it's too much? Yeah, I tend to. I tend to not. Um, it's, it, it's too much. Um, I could go back up to my apartment. Um, I live. Oh, about three, four miles just up on the west side of, of Manhattan. But um, by the time I'm here and I get a bite to eat, it's real. I really don't have that much time anyway. So it's it's a nice. Uh, luckily, I have a very nice, cozy little dressing room, and I can lie down on the sofa. So 
Does the thrill of being a Broadway star ever leave you when you come down south and you enter Times Square and you see the lights and the billboards and your character is on most of them? Does that ever leave you, that feeling that, God, I'm part of this? No, it really doesn't. I mean, as I said, you know, sometimes you do take things for granted. We all do. I think it's human nature. But, you know, every once in a while I, I'll be jarred back into, uh, you know, realizing that, that I, I've got a pretty amazing job and, and uh, I'm a very lucky guy. And I've interviewed four or five phantoms, and I'm yet to come to a conclusion whether I should feel sorry for him or not, because there's something quite evil about him at the core, right. yet we have a sympathy with him, because there's, there's a tragedy there, isn't there? There is. I think that's, that's the staying power of this show. I think it's why the show is such a huge success, beyond the glorious music and the beautiful staging and uh, Maria Bjornsson's fantastic sets and, and uh, um, costumes. I, it, you... You, we all, I think, in some way can identify with this guy. And, and so, yeah, I mean, I had, to, I had to feel sympathetic toward him to play him, to, to even begin to, to play him. Um, but, y yeah, he's a terrorist in a way. He does terrible things to people. He kills. And it's, uh, yeah. But, but, you know, it's all part of the melodrama. It's all part of the, the romance of it. It's the, that we all, we all kind of feel torn i think it's okay to feel a little bit a little bit neurotic about rooting for him <laughs> and as for the technical side to this show it is amazing to me that this was created over 20 years ago and theater's moved on so much in terms of the production yet it's still contemporary it's still big it's still impressive i mean this must have been way beyond its years when it first got on the stage it must have been. I, I remember seeing it. Actually, I was doing Anything Goes at Lincoln Center just a few miles up the road when this show opened. And I remember coming to see it in previews. And it was the most talked about show. We were a little bit jealous, actually, up there because we had a pretty good show, too. But uh, this was it. You know, this was the show. And uh, it, I, I just remember sitting in my seat thinking, wow, this, this, is, this is theatrical spectacle times 10. And then you, you add in all the other layers, the, the beautiful music and, of, of course, the, you know, the, the story itself. And it's, I, you know, here we are 20 years on, almost 21 years on, on the Broadway stage, and I know it's uh, coming up 22 years in London, it, and the audiences are still riveted by it. And it's, you know, it's, every once in a while you have to kind of pinch yourself and say, uh, this is amazing. There, this is unprecedented that a show like this can have this kind of staying power. It's broken up, of course, all the records. And I, I think that's the reason. And 19 years ago when you sat there, did you ever dream that one day it would be you? No, never. No, it didn't occur to me at the time. <laughs> well, you know, of course, because I had just begun the work on Anything Goes, and Anything Goes was as far a cry from Phantom of the Opera as you could possibly get. You know, it's light and silly and, you know, a farce. and a, a, It was a complete lark to be doing that show. And, and so it never, it just never crossed my mind at the time. Um, but uh, little did I know what I had in store for me because it's just been, as I said, a blessing. Has the creator been to see you in it, and how did that change your performance? Oh, he certainly has. Uh, well, how did it change my performance? It probably, it certainly, talking about being on your toes, when Andrew Lloyd Webber is out in the house, <laughs> you uh, you know, when he's in front, you know you, you've got to be on your game. Um, but yeah, it's it's the most vocally demanding show I've ever done. It's just, and, and it really has not so much to do with the range of the singing, as, which is quite quite expansive the music of the night alone spans you know a quite a quite a range vocally it's the it's the crazy maniacal screaming and yelling that goes on during the show i mean my voice right now i can feel it i can hear it in fact it's it's a bit hammered from having done the show this afternoon for the matinee um and and it it takes its toll i mean i basically sometimes i'll i'll um I'll be going out on, on a voiceover audition for a commercial or something, and I'll have to call my agent and say, you know what, I just can't, I can't make it, I, because my voice, you know, you can hear it. Uh, so it, 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 that's, that's the price I pay for it, um, but uh, it comes back to me in, uh, in, in lovely ways. And will you pay the price of the two-show day tomorrow? When will you feel the effect of these two shows back-to-back? -back? Yeah, that's when I'm at my worst, I think, is, is um, because we do two shows on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So, so consequently, Thursdays and Sundays, I basically shut up and I don't talk. Um, 
and 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 somehow or other, I think in a way, I think somebody said, well, you know, why why do you think it is that you're able to do this 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 long? And I really think it comes down to just the genes that I was given. I have the I have pipes that are able to kind of you know replenish and refurbish themselves, and and uh, I find myself back up on on the stage again on a Monday night. Um, so that's you know, I guess I'm just lucky that way. Andrew's launched several TV shows in the last three years on the BBC, trying to find a Maria or a Joseph. I challenge him to find a Phantom because this is not in the same league. I mean, you've really got to be a workhorse. You've really got to be an old pro to be able to deliver this eight times a week. And even in the West End, they've struggled to do eight performances a week. How do you solve a problem like the Phantom? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, uh, it, it it is. It does require a certain skill set that I think would be tough to to just kind of, um, you know, find out there in a, in a general population pool. You know, I think uh, certainly for me, as I said earlier, I think that the fact that I came to this role with the experience that I had doing shows for as many years as I did uh, certainly informed the performance and also, I think, added to my staying power because I learned how not to push it, how not to take it too far uh, and perhaps even to be able to leave the character behind when I left the stage door at night. And what about going to the other coast to do the Vegas show, which is the spectacular, and it's even bigger and more brash than this? It's a shorter show, but there's two of them a night. Yeah. Would you consider that? I like the idea of the shorter show. The shorter <laughs> thing really appeals to me. Uh, you know, they cut. I think they cut about 20 minutes, at least 20 minutes out of it. Um, but, I, you know, I love being home I've I've done shows on the road before I've toured all over this country um, I love being in my home I love to be able to go home at night uh, to my bed so it's it's uh, it's tempting but at the same time this is this is a pretty good gig and with all those buffets we can't have a clinically obese phantom can we really <laughs> exactly no <laughs> is there anything that could beat this in terms of profile or heritage on Broadway well, you're always looking for something new to do. I mean, obviously, um, the blessing of having done this this long has been great. Uh, you know, it's been it's been good for the pocketbook, and it's you know it's been good for a number of reasons. Of course, to be able to have a, a job to go to every day. Uh, but you know, of course, you look for you look for the next job, and. Um, and I, I, I don't really have any particular role that that I that jumps out at me and says I have to do that. But but um, I'm I'm always ready. And I'm and while doing this, I'm I'm taking part in workshops of of up and coming or hopeful up and coming uh, shows that are, that are, you know are in development. Um, so you know you, you always keep an eye open. But um, for the meantime, I'm very happy to have this. Howard, it's a true thrill to meet you because you're such a big star and such an impressive performer. I think I've seen you in this twice before over the years, and there's just something menacing about you but warm at the same time, and it's getting that balance right, isn't it? I think that's, uh, I, I think that's really key to it, and thank you very much for the compliment. I, I appreciate it. I, um, as I said, I, I felt an, a, a definite um, identification with this character when I first saw it and and certainly um, subsequently when asked to do it and um, and I think that's key and if y if you the actor can feel that certainly hopefully the audience is going to as well and let's face it they've had enough opportunities to get rid of you if they didn't like you <laughs> that's right that's right they haven't got rid of me yet <laughs> so I don't know I'm doing something right Howard McGillan thank you very much for talking to us on the magic of the musicals Phantom's the big show here at the Majestic on 44th and Broadway and it is the show to see it's like an old traditional musical it's got the scenery the set most importantly the music and the performers congratulations to you thanks for talking to me thank you Alex it's a pleasure